But right now, an explosive player joining us once again from the San Jose Earthquakes, Marvell Wynn. Marvell, welcome, my friend. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you again. Pleasure to have you on. It's always great having you on, Marvell. 1-1 one, one draw against Orlando City. Safe to say, with these two new expansion franchises, New York City FC and Orlando, there's no pushover games anymore in MLS, Marvell? Oh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a reasonable comment. I mean, every team out here now is... Uh, Anybody can be anybody on any given day. I mean, with Kaka in that lineup, Canadian superstar, young phenom on the rise, Kyle Lauren, it, it looks like a side that actually could fight for a playoff spot and make some trouble once they get in. Um, agreed. They were actually very difficult to uh, break down even when they went down a man. So um, I can see them definitely being a competitor later on in the season. Let me ask you this, Marvell. Ever since you made the, the, the move over to San Jose, I've been yelling and screaming last year when T Team USA made their selections uh, for Brazil 2014. They had a great uh, World Cup. I, I didn't understand why Clarence Goodson didn't get the respect he deserved and a, a good long look. You're playing alongside this guy. Tell us a little about, about the great talent uh, Clarence uh, provides a lot of the fans out there in San Jose. Um, playing with Clarence has actually been like a, a really nice experience. In the back, you might not see him uh, talking too much, but he's actually very vocal. He's um, he always likes us to come inside. He's always making sure the whole back line is connected, as well as talking to our uh, holding center mids and even our goalkeeper at times. He always wants to spread out um, when we have the ball offensively. And uh, yeah, he's he's a uh, quite the leader back there offensively and defensively for us. Talk about that big goal for Chris Wondolowski himself for your team as well. And another guy, in my opinion, who doesn't get the respect internationally, but he does get the respect in MLS, Marvell. Uh, Wando is an amazing player. I know he's, he's known for his goal-scoring talent. I mean, we even made fun of him today where um, he scored 100 goals and the yardage of every goal combined is probably 80 yards. He's always uh, that guy creeping around the box, getting those in. And um, even after making that penalty, I, I wanted to celebrate with him, but we had just tied it up. So I go in for him, and he just, I want to high five and a hug, and he just slaps my hand as hard as he can. But um, <laughs> I think he's a great player. He also comes into the mid for us, and he helps us possess it, move it from side to side and everything. I think he's a, he's a great guy as well as a great player. A former MLSer and a guy that a lot of people up here in Canada know, I'm sure you know as well, Dwayne Di Rosario just retired recently. I had the chance uh, to speak with him. Actually, an hour after he retired, he was on the field. We were at a semi-pro game, and we talked about a number of teams, and we talked about a certain players, and Wondolowski came up, and he said, here's a guy that is a pure finisher. Once he gets that ball in the box, he's deadly. It's amazing how he's so composed. He's a very, he's very excitable. He's, he gets uh, very into the game. He yells a lot. He screams. He gets very emotional. But when he's in the box, he's so cool, calm, and composed. You might see a couple of those go from this year where there could be times inside the six where he could just hit it as hard as he can. But he, he cuts it back calmly and places it uh, in the back of the net. Marvell, let's talk about new head coach uh, Dominic Kinnear. To me, I've said this time and time again, I think he is one of the three best right now in North America. And I think this is a guy that doesn't get, again, the respect he deserves. When the job came up for Canada's men's national team, I said all along that I would love to see Dominic Kinnear in the mix, in that conversation. I've talked to many of his players in the past. They rave about him. What have you enjoyed early on playing under Coach Kinnear? What I've enjoyed from Coach Kinnear is how he gets the best out of us between every practice. He's, he's not too on top of you, but if if we're playing and sometimes you get a feeling that today's not going so well for this player or that player or it just seems slow, he calls it out and he makes sure that that stops immediately. He has, a, he has a very high standard for every practice, for every player, for every game, all the time. So he makes sure that all of us puts in 100% no matter what we're doing. If we're on the field, we are there to concentrate and improve and he makes sure that that happens. You're getting ready to take on TFC. They come off a win here against the Portland Timbers, uh, a real tough loss in their first home game against the Houston Dynamo. But to me, I'm sure I don't have to tell you this, the main guy that uh, San Jose Earthquakes yourself, Clarence Goodson, have to focus in on is uh, Sebastian Jovinko. Talk about how Coach Kinnear and you guys are getting ready to really try to keep this guy in check. So what we have to do is like, we kind of just stick to our general plans of staying inside, staying close, and making sure that they don't have time on the ball to turn and do what they like to do. Just make sure that they can go backwards and possibly to the outside so they can't use their um, the middle of the park where they can possibly get the Bradley to spray balls here and there. 
And up top, we just have to make sure that we, we have, try to keep them facing away from our goal as much as possible. You know, Marvell, the league has grown in leaps and bounds. We talked about Orlando coming in. We talked about New York City uh, FC coming in. We, we know that Minnesota's coming, uh, possibly Miami. We know Atlanta's coming on and on. Another L.A. team. I think this is great for the league. I think it's outstanding. You've been around the league in some big, big cities. But now you're playing in San Jose. I've always said that I consider the San Jose Earthquakes the Green Bay Packers of the NFL in the MLS. They're a community-based club. They've got rabid fans, smart, intelligent fans, great facility. How do you now, being there in San Jose, rate these fans in this community? I rate them very highly. Um, even when they were at Buckshaw, they would have the ultras behind, the, uh, behind the, uh, either goal and just rooting and cheering, and they were just doing it nonstop. Now that I'm here and actually a part of it, um, I see them writing me back on Twitter and quoting, uh, writing me back on Instagram as well. And they're very involved at all times, in, uh, and especially during the games. We do our own celebration with them afterward when we get a win. And this whole community in general, they absolutely love coming to games. And the atmosphere at uh, Avaya Stadium is amazing. You know, Marvell, earlier on this afternoon, I was calling a PDL game here up in Toronto. And I know that you're born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I have spent a lot of time in Pennsylvania, whether Pittsburgh, Erie, you know, you name it, Philly. And to me, I, I don't understand. You know, they've got the Pittsburgh Riverhounds they're playing in PDL. I don't understand why Pittsburgh never gets a real a serious look. Here's a city that I think would really embrace an MLS franchise. What's your thoughts on that? I fully agree. Um, getting another team out there in Pittsburgh of any show would be great. Um, but I do have friends uh, that I know in Philly, and if Pittsburgh were to get a team, that, that probably would be instantaneous and just, Actually, really, really entertaining to watch. I mean, that would be fun to see. Uh, I mean, it absolutely would. It would go to the Pacific Northwest where you see Seattle, Portland, and Vancouver, that atmosphere. Now you're starting to see the two New York squads really getting into it. I think this is what it's all about. Everybody loves a rivalry. Those games are just more fun to watch. You, you see people going to tackles more. You see people uh, running after balls at 50-50. The challenges are more intense. The more rivalries they have, the more entertaining soccer you can see. Let me ask you this, Marvell, before we let you go, we really appreciate your time. We've talked about the league growing in leaps and bounds. Now we're talking about players coming in, in droves here to MLS that want to come. We heard recently maybe Andrea Pirlo would like to come and play in MLS, maybe in L.A. or in New York. I mean, others are coming, and now it's no longer, as you and I uh, can hear from many in the past, used to call this a vacation league. It's no longer considered that. It's a serious league. It's a league that if you don't come here prepared, you will feel it. I always thought that. I never, I never thought that was a vacation league. I mean, obviously, you just... Uh this is the only place I've been, but I do feel that uh, players coming up, coming in from overseas, they may even still consider it a vacation league, but once they're here, they realize that it's a whole different animal, whereas they're over there, they take a couple hour bus ride, and they go there after destination, but traveling across country uh, a day or two before a game, and having to adjust to altitude in places like Denver, and it's just very different, and there's our style of play, we're very fit league. And they may not have all the time the ball in the world to look and you know place their passes. Where you get the ball here, we're we're right on you. We're not going to give you time. You know, let me ask you this, and we'll close it out, Marvell. We really appreciate your time in the USA and in Canada as well. We saw in 2014. Uh, World Cup in Brazil, the USA, ex, you know, exceeded expectations of many. But to me, something that sticks out time and time again, whether it's Canada, my travels in the U.S., there's no identity, there's no style of play yet under Jurgen Klinsmann, under Benito Floro. And I think that's important for the youth clubs in Canada and in the U.S. of A. Do you feel that, you know, as the youngsters start to mature and they develop, that the youth clubs have to really uh, ingrain in these youngsters a style, an identity? Uh, I believe that's important, but that will vary from coach to coach. Each coach has their own style of play. Each coach likes to bring in their own players that play towards their styles. Uh, you can be a counterattacking team. You can be possession-oriented. You could be going straight down the middle. You could be like going to the flanks and getting crosses in. I believe uh, growing up, players and you, the youth should be able to adjust to all different types and then maybe tune it down a little bit more whether they go into university or their colleges. Then once you come into the professional level, you'll be well-versed in all different styles and you'll be able to adjust accordingly. 
Marvell Wynn of the San Jose Earthquakes, you're a class act. You've always taken time to join me on my show. Looking forward to see you on the weekend. Good luck against TFC and good luck the remainder of the season, my friend. All right, thanks for having me. Thanks a lot. Pleasure's all mine. That is Marvell Wynn of the San Jose Earthquakes. We'll